We welcome you to the Adam Clayton Power Academy. This is the first of four candidate forums being held to provide you, the voters across the south side of Chicago, an opportunity to meet, hear, and question both aldermanic and mayoral candidates. Can we have quiet, please? Can we have quiet, please? Thank you. In just 45 days, voters will head to the polls to decide who will be mayor and who will be retained as alderman or booted out of office. The results literally lie in your hands. These forums are designed to help you make an educated choice come Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. These forums are called to action, and it is being presented during a very historic time. Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, his 86th birthday, is coming on January 15th, and the opening of Selma, a chronology of the civil rights movement and the very reason why you are here today. You have the right to vote and to make a good decision as to who you will support. Feel free during this time of instruction and introduction to, in, to serve yourself from the light refreshments that we have provided you at the back of the room. But please refrain from walking and other activities that might be disruptive after the candidates begin their opening statements. Bathrooms are located on this floor down the hall. Today's uh, candidates for today, we're going to be talking, we've already talked to the 10th Ward, now we're addressing the 5th Ward. The next horn will be the 8th Ward and then the 7th Ward. They will present to you their positions on several areas of city government and will affect the quality of life for you and your family. So get ready for opening your hearts and your minds to discern the merits of the presentations you will hear today to help you formulate your voting decision. All of us play a part in making this forum successful. So please, if you have something that rings, dings, flashes, or crashes, please cut it off now or put it in on vibrate. Also, please hold all applause until the end of the forum. There are many here who favor one candidate, and if we applaud as they speak, we will have less time for questions to be answered. At the end of each session, you will be given an opportunity to give your candidate of choice a rousing round of applause. Now, for the rules of this forum that will provide each candidate an equal opportunity to present their positions to you, the voters. Number one, candidates will have two minutes for their opening statement, one minute to respond to each question, and two minutes to present their closing statements. Our timekeepers, um, the lady in the blue in the front, hold that, she's holding up a yellow card. Okay, she's gonna be keeping time for us. For opening and closing statements, a yellow warning card will be raised at the 1 minute 30 second time to remind the candidates to wrap it up. For all questions, the yellow warning card will be raised at 30 seconds for candidates to wrap it up. Red cards will be raised to let them know that their time has ended. Now, for those who do not stop and they keep on going, I'm simply going to end their presentation, so please don't make me do that. Besides time, uh, because time will not permit us to cover all the areas in this forum, a copy of the candidate's responses to a game changer questionnaire has been made available to you. Perhaps many of the questions you would like answered were addressed in the questionnaire. However, pages will pass out and collect postcards to get your questions for the candidates. Please word all questions in a general way so all candidates can respond to them. Question screeners have been assigned to determine if questions from the audience have already been addressed in the candidate's questionnaire or are outside the authority and the duties of offices the candidates are seeking. Candidates are seated in alphabetical order and have drawn a number to determine their order for opening statements. The order is reversed for closing statements. I will determine a random but fair and structured framework for questions to be asked. And I also like to remind um, everyone here that early voting for the February 24th, 2015 municipal election will be offered from Monday, February 9th through Saturday, February 21st. All 51 early voting sites will be open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday hours will be offered at five regional sites. So I ask you to go and just Google Chicago Board of Election. Right on their front page, you will find the instructions for early voting, and that's very important, especially the weather that we're uh, experiencing right now. Um, so I, I hope. So we're going to begin with opening statements from uh, Robin Boyd Clark. She is number one.
Robin Boy Clark. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Robin Boyd Clark, and I am a parent, a business owner. I have a business called The Sentuary on 71st Street. It's nine years old in the Fifth Ward. I am a longtime community builder, not just a builder of townhomes, a builder of people. I'm not here because I want to get accolades or because I want a $100,000 salary. I'm here because people in the community came to me with petitions that have my name on it. I put my Nikes on, I got out in the community, and I got a consensus of what people wanted, and they said that they wanted change, and they wanted it now. And I believe that I am the candidate that has the professional skill sets and the community relations background to be a dynamic alderman. I would like your support, I would like your vote, and of course, I would love your donations. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Uh, number two is Alderman um, Hairston. Thank you. Uh, my name is Leslie Hairston. Um, I am running for re-election as Alderman in the Fifth Ward. Uh, my focus has been, is now, and will continue to be um, economic development in, in the uh, neighborhood in the Fifth Ward. Um, I have had uh, the privilege of serving four communities of Greater Grand Crossing, Woodlawn, South Shore, and the Hyde Park area. Uh, some of the things that you might notice that I've brought to us uh, uh, the South Side, particularly in the Fifth Ward, is the Starbucks um, and uh, the, the Staples and the Save-A-Lot grocery store. And currently, we are revitalizing that old bank building uh, that's been vacant for more than 30 years. Uh, we partnered with the Rebuild Foundation and hired local. And uh, so now that is about to become something that is good for the community. And we are also going to be hosting the John Johnson Library in that facility. Um, I have also focused on education, opposing the school closings in the Fifth Ward. I attended all of the hearings against that. I have worked with my teachers to make sure that our schools are performing, and in the Fifth Ward they are. But in addition to that, I am providing activities for our youth, not just in the school, but I'm also providing activities for our young people, our young adults. I created an SSA along 71st Street, which has a special taxing body for the businesses, the ones that take the money out of the community and don't put them back into the community. I have created that. We partner with the CARER program, which takes uh, high school dropouts and college dropouts and people that have uh, backgrounds and gives them a job, a paying job, and teaches them a skill set. They have been working on 71st Street for the past 10 years. Next one is number three, Tiffany Brooks. Good afternoon. Thank you, NAACP, for come, uh, organizing this forum, and thank you to all of you who are attending. My name is Tiffany Brooks. I am a candidate for Alderman of the Fifth Ward, City of Chicago. I am a resident of South Shore and a product of Chicago Public Schools. I did graduate from Chicago Public High School as well as uh, elementary school. And I am a licensed Illinois attorney. Currently, I am running for alderman. I believe that the ward itself holds the resources as well as the assets that are needed in order to revitalize and bring the ward to life as well as unifying the ward. I come from, my mother is a nurse. My father is an ex-military. My grandmother is a homemaker. My grandfather was a construction worker. Hardworking, regular, everyday people everyday families that believed in their community, that stuck together. My grandmother worked with TWO. They migrated from Woodline and came to South Shore, have been there for nearly 50 years. I've watched South Shore change, and I'm here to bring it back to life with your help. I cannot do it alone. I'm not saying I can. I am looking to the people to help, uh, to help me bring this together put it all together and bring it before the powers that be, be it the city council, the state legislator, whomever. We need to stand up together now, take charge, and show them 
that we are one. Our community is one. We will not be ignored. We will be heard and we will fight together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, fourth is uh, Anne Marie Mills. I'm Anne Marie Miles. I'm running for Alderman of the Fifth Ward because I believe that the Fifth Ward has always been the independent voice in the city of Chicago. We've had aldermen who have spoken out. Okay, I'm getting hints from the lady in the audience. Thank you. We've always been the voice that spoke out that was the conscience of the city. And I think it is unacceptable that in the last 15 and a half years, we have an alderman who is just grandstanded, goes and votes uh, no on the parking meter deal and then turns around and votes to spend the money. I think it's unacceptable that we don't have a grocery store in South Shore. She's known about it since September of 2013, two years ago. And we have no grocery stores, and grocers will not work with her. We have Stony Island Avenue, which has 40 to 60,000 cars a day that goes up and down. We have the highest grossing Starbucks. We have the highest grossing Save-A-Lot in the Chicagoland area. And yet now, from when I ran last time, we have more abandoned buildings and more vacant lots on Stony than we did four years ago. We have an alderman who paid, I have $54,000 a few years ago to, pay, to buy 100 parking spaces for the people who live in the co-ops and condos along the lake in Hyde Park. Think of all the young people she could have hired. So I am running because we want an independent voice, one that is not supported by real estate developers, and one who can get the job done. Thank you very much. The next is Reverend Jedediah Brown. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Jedediah Brown. I am the senior pastor of Chosen Generation over six years now. I am the national president of a project that I founded called the Young Leaders Alliance, and I am a community organizer in the city of Chicago. Uh, when I was, my first childhood home was on 71st and Bell. And it, when I, on 71st and Bell uh, is where I learned the power of community because I had a grandmother who was very active and very well known in her community as much as Harold Washington actually came to my grandmother's house when he was deciding to run for mayor. And my grandmother passed away and my mother perceived that she did not think that the Chicago Public Schools was gonna have the quality education that I needed. She didn't perceive that there will be economic opportunities for me growing up in Chicago as a black man. And she was concerned about my public safety in the neighborhood, so she chose to move us to the suburbs. I'm running for Alderman because I've always loved Chicago and my family is rooted here. And I came back as an adult and I moved out of South Shore once because of those same concerns my mom had for me. But I'm running for Alderman now because I don't want any other parent to have to make that decision. And I want them to know that if they have a, an issue in education, if they have an issue with economics, if they have an issue with public safety, that they would have not a machinist but a human being that is a resident in the war, that will advocate, that would fight, and that will be an open door and an open voice for them. As a pastor, I have learned how to sit down and to hear what really is wrong and what's really going on with people. And I want to take that skill set, the, the skill set that I've gotten in organizing my com in communities across Chicago with some of the programs that this mayor has run, like the Faith and Community Action Night, where he brought all the citizens out. I was the leader of that, and that is the kind of ultimate that I want to be that strengthens the voice of people so that we can believe again and stop worrying about people not representing us. Thank you all for your opening statements. Uh, now we're going to go to the presentations. Candidates will have two minutes for their opening statement, the first being Robin Boyd Clark. I'm sorry. For the presentation? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Questions from hi. I'm okay. <laughs> questions. Questions from the panelists. And and can you please state your name? Do you have a mic over there? Yes. Okay. My name is Ray Bowman. The Chicago Tribune has reported that between 60,000 and 90,000 cars travel through the intersection of 71st and Stony Island daily. Many studies have determined that this corridor possesses a large amount of potential for economic development on the south side, yet there has been little development. What are your plans to develop the Stony Island corridor, which has seen relatively little economic growth? Answer that number one. Who's the first? Number one, the first. I'm Robin Boyd Clark, and as indicated, I do have a business on the 71st Street Corridor. The 71st Street Corridor is a major arterial commercial business district in the South Shore. The TIF we had, which was designated in 1998, nothing has been done with that TIF. Nothing comparatively. We did get a new high school, and that's beautiful, but we're also getting ready to have an eminent domain, okay, at Jeffrey Plaza. That whole area is part of the TIF, okay? And I am not for an eminent domain without a plan, and what I would be doing is establishing immediately a CDC, a Community Development Corporation, where 33% of the people on the board have to be members of the community, and I would also enact a small business um, improvement fund on 71st Street. We also need to have more police presence on 71st Street, and I would also do some things in, in relationship to housing, housing as it is interpreted in terms of growing the community. Thank you. Before we go to, before we go to the next candidate, if you are not properly parked, please, please go get your cars and there is a parking lot across the street because the police are out there and they will tow your car. We don't want that to happen to you. Uh, some of you are blocking uh, others trying to leave. Okay, so the second candidate to answer the question will be uh, Alderman Le Leslie Harrison. Thank you. Uh, the reason that there is a Stony Island corridor uh, is because I created it. Uh, the businesses that you see there, uh, I brought to that corridor. Um, unfortunately, you know, businesses come and go. I want the same things that everybody else wants because I live in the community. I shop in the community. I live here. This is me. Do you think I don't want a grocery store two blocks from my house? I want the grocery store, but unfortunately, the truth of the matter is, is that we don't own the grocery store. We do not own the grocery store. And it's not that no grocery store wants to be here. Lots of grocery stores want to be here. They just don't want to pay $22 a square foot when the property is only worth between $9 and $12 a square foot. That's the truth of the matter. So let's not be caught up in what other people are telling you and who they're telling you to blame for it. It's not that there hasn't been anything done. There is a plan. There is a plan. There has been a plan. There are lots of groups that are working on it, the South Shore Planning Coalition. Instead of coming in talking about we want to start from new, why don't we work with what's there? Okay, now the... The third is uh, Tiffany. Uh, my name is Tiffany Brooks, uh, again. And as far as the economic development in the ward itself, specifically the Stony Island Corridor, no one wants to bring or maintain a business where they do not feel safe. So I think that we may be overlooking an ultimate concern of safety, we have to make sh South Shore competitive for capital infusion. And in order to do that, to bring the dollars, we have to start by cleaning up these streets. We have to. We have to make South Shore a place where business owners want to bring their business and keep their, we have to attract them, we have to woo them, we have to court them, but we also have to make them want to live there, want to reside there, want to bring their children there, allow them, advertise elsewhere, and attract consumers from other neighborhoods. They don't want to come there because ultimately they don't feel safe there. So we're overlooking one step. Thank you very much. The next 
question is number uh, number three. I'm sorry. Thank you. So I have talked about the Stony Island Corridor as part of my platform. If you go to my website, annemariemiles.com, you will see that I have been talking about this since the last time I ran. It is because my opponent, the current alderman, is in charge of Stony Island that we have all those vacant lots and abandoned buildings. And the only development I see that she's doing is for the guy who tears them down. We need to get businesses, and maybe if we can't bring in some of the chain stores, you start to encourage local businesses. I have a business council, which I will be expanding when I am elected, and we will be bringing business to Stony Island, and it will flow out to 71st Street, and to the other communities. One of the greatest, I'm Jedediah Brown. Uh, one of the greatest measures of a neighborhood's success is the vibrancy of its economic corridors. Uh, let me just first state that my campaign slogan is simply this, no excuses, just results. And I believe that we need to, first of all, well, first of all, let me say this, as a resident, I would, I've been wanting to find out who created that, and I'm glad that that person made themselves known here today because I don't have quality organic food choices in my neighborhood. I do not have what I, my resource or my greatest resource locally is on the other side of my ward in Hyde Park where I have to go drive miles away in other wards just to find the basic necessities that I need for everyday living. But what I understand and what I'm committed to is that you have to take care of what you have before you try to attract something new. So the days of big box, uh, big box retailers getting the prioritizing of TIF funds will be over under my uh, administration as I will advocate for those resources to go where they are intended, to blighted communities, so that the mom and pops that are in the neighborhood currently can look better, we can clean it up, and we can attract somebody else to want to spend and to thrive in our neighborhood. Okay, thank you very much. The panel, what's your second question? And please state your name. Jennifer Edwards, SEIU. Participatory budgeting is an innovative process used to efficiently and democratically budget dollars for public needs. This process of community members deciding how to use their own dollars is successful all over the world, including in Brazil and New York. In Chicago, aldermen and alderwomen are setting an example by implementing their discretionary funds through participatory budgeting. People who live, work, and attend school in these aldermatic districts come together to decide how to allocate the $1 million of discretionary funds. What do you think about community members in your district coming together to the improve the community through participatory budgeting? If you are elected, will you use participatory budgeting to allocate your $1 million discretionary fund? Alderman Leslie Harrison, you're the first one. Thank you. Uh, I support participatory budgeting. As a matter of fact, I was one of the first aldermen in the city of Chicago after Alderman Joe Moore of the 49th Ward that implemented the participatory budgeting process. Uh, one of the things that um, I think is important about it is that it allows people to be involved in the decisions that and how their tax dollars are spent. It doesn't have to be done the way that the name participatory budgeting says. So I have done that since taking office. I tried the participatory budgeting the way that they said with all the meetings. They didn't tell you that it costs $60,000 and where all the money comes to, to pay for all of those meetings. So my community told me that they didn't want to do that process, but they still wanted to make the decisions, and I still continue to allow them to do that. All right, the next one to answer that question would be number one. Three FM, Tiffany. I definitely support the participatory budgeting, and if elected, 
I would implement a strategy because I am in talks right now with and negotiations with an entity to come into the war and bring products and revenue to make the war self-sustaining. We need a self-sustaining mechanism. If we generate revenue, if we generate money, if we create jobs in the ward, we have to bring it before the community so that the community can decide and say, yes, that's something I want. Yes, that's something I'd like to be a part of. Yes, that is something that I would support using my tax dollars for. So I absolutely support the participatory budgeting. Okay. Anne-Marie Miles. I'm Anne Murray Miles, and there was participatory budgeting in the Fifth Ward. I participated in it. I went through many, many cold nights coming down for the meetings. We worked together. We came up with a wonderful plan for an organic garden on 71st Street. It was going to involve the community. We were going to be teaching young people how to garden. We were talking about opportunities to hire young people during the summer. We received the number one votes on participatory budgeting. And have you seen our garden? No, because the alderman is incapable of making anything happen. It took her 14 months to get a soil report. You think you have a garden, you'd want a soil report? No, not this alderman. So I'm in favor of participatory budgeting, but when I'm alderman, the projects will get done. Okay, one of the first one of the first, well, first of all, let me uh, make it really clear that I don't believe that an alderman is supposed to dictate. I believe they're supposed to be a representative, an advocate, and a steward. So participatory budget uh, processing is absolutely amazing, and I do applaud the alderman for that process, but ending it because of financial reasons for me is an issue. I believe that we must be creative enough to understand that it's not one dollar that should be spent in our ward that the community should not have oversight and the voice on. And that's as my first alderman, because these, these colors keep coming up in this time for a brother. I'll make it really clear. My first act is to create an advisory council where there will be a representative in each precinct. And that will be independent of my office and that will hold it accountable and that would hear the voices of the constituents that is in the individual precinct. They will bring back their decision as a ward and I will be their advocate and their representative to push what it is that the ward desires to have. My name is Robin Boyd Clark, and I am definitely in favor of the participatory, participatory budget. I think it's imperative that taxpayers have the right to choose and figure out what types of projects that they want to do. But I also think it is the goal, uh, the necessity of leaders to help the community identify the types of projects that are critical to the survival and success in the ward so that everyone can thrive. As an alderman, I would be helping people identify projects in the ward to leverage them to get state and federal dollars to match them so that we can complete them and they can be the best for the ward. Thank you. Please hold your applause because um, you're cutting into our time. We're going to take more questions from the panel. Our next question, uh, let me, Rosita Chitanda is my name. Our next question is about education. In recent years, there has been a dramatic decrease in the number of African American teachers and Hispanic teachers. Since 2000, we have lost over 10,000 African-American teachers. Since 2011, Hispanic teachers have decreased by 4.8%. How will you support bringing back black and minority teachers into the classroom? 
Okay, we're going to, uh, to answer that question starting out, candidate number three. This is candidate number three. Tif uh, Tiffany Brooks is my name. I definitely am an advocate for education. I am an adjunct professor at Northeastern Illinois University. And I would propose, yeah, I would propose first and foremost, thank you, that um, it starts with the school board. We have to look there first. Um, we've, we've tossed around whether or not to have an elected school board. If, if, that's, if that alternative is not something that the people support, then just say it. But if, if it is something that could even bring a glimpse of change, let's try it. Let's have an elected school board. Let's try to get these teachers reinstated. And once we get them in, let's promote professional development for the principals and their staff. We lack the funding there. And, and speaking of funding, where is it going? We got to have transparency and we have to have accountability within the school board and within the schools themselves. And we need the funds to be equally divided, not just based on zip code, neighborhood, area. We need these funds to be equally divided. Thank you. Okay, I, I am the daughter of a Chicago public schools uh, teacher for 43 years um, in Robert Taylor. Um, I represent communities that have teachers and retired teachers. Uh, some of the things that we have been doing is having them mentor uh, some of the young kids in college. Actually, I work with some college students and try to recruit them. I've been working with the Chicago Teachers Union to make sure that our young people are exposed to teaching as a career. And I think we have to continue put placing an importance on educating our young black men and women and making sure that teaching is an option for them. But the, the most important thing that we have to do is make sure that they have a path to a career. And, I, and I'm talking about making sure that their pensions, making sure that the, uh, the, uh, the agreement that they make when they come into teaching is honored when they come out of teaching. The next person to answer this is Robin Boyd Clark. Oh, okay. I'm Robin Boyd Clark. I know where to find black teachers. You can find them at HBCUs. There's a whole bunch of historically black colleges and universities all across this country, and I'm a graduate of one of them, Tuskegee University, founded by Booker T. Washington, strong educator, strong principals. And I think we need to also send some high school students, identify students, and send them into educational programs. We're going to have free community colleges, then we need to have some good education programs set up for people to be able to attend them. I also think that we should look into universities like South Carolina State University that has scholarships for black men so we can get some brothers in those classrooms so that these young men can understand what they need to be doing, how they need to be focused, and how to be successful as a man. And so basically, I think we should identify top educational institutions in the country that have education programs, and we should try to direct our students into them and recruit at black colleges. Thank you. I want to make it uh, very clear that in any position of leadership, you should never put education second to anything. And one of the best ways that you can educate someone is to have individuals who understand their language. Now, I don't have the time because those colors are going to come up real soon. But my office is getting ready to unveil an, ec an education plan that will not only send an entire generation of children to school, and thanks to Barack Obama, we're going to integrate making sure that our children are able to have a clear path to college for free. But as it relates to teachers being black in our education system, we, should, we need to look at the budget. Because what has happened to principals is they've had to decide upon hiring experienced teachers versus having programs for the kids. And what needs to happen is that we need to find creative ways to get more funding so that they can keep those skilled 
African American black teachers in there that have been educating for years that have lost their jobs because of budget issues with the CPS school system, and that is what I'm going to advocate for, and that is the plan that is going to be released on Brown for Fifth Ward.com. Hi, I'm Ann Murray Miles, and I want to thank you for that question because it raises not just the hiring and retention of African American teachers, but it also talks to the fact that in Chicago, we as a city hire fewer African Americans in our municipal jobs. And one of the ways that African Americans have successfully transitioned into the middle class has been through municipal employment. We are about 20 or 30 percent lower than New York City, than Los Angeles, than other cities with a significant minority population. And we have to work to teach people that it is not just to be a teacher, but there are good jobs as engineers, as managers, as working even in uh, sanitation department, that there are good, steady jobs. And we have to make sure that our young people are attached to the workforce. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Now we're going to have a question uh, from the audience and it's going to be read by one of the panelists. And the panelists, can you state your name too, please? My name is Doris Mosley, and I'm from SEIU. The question is, what would you do to bring a food store back to the 71st Street Jeffrey Mall? All right, um, Alderman Hairston. All right, so, so let me set this record straight. Uh, the store closed in December. It is a store that is not owned by me. It is owned by a very wealthy man in, 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 in California. Um, I have decided that um, with the help of the community who did come down to City Hall and testify that we as a community would take over that grocery store, come up with the plan that the community wants and implement that plan, but you have to have the authority. People keep talking around here as if rules don't matter. I can't take your, come and take your property if, you don't, if, if, if I don't own it. I mean, there's got to be some rules that got to be followed. Like I said, I want a grocery store more than anybody else. I have talked to no less than 19 grocers that are interested in coming to the ward, but you got to have someone who is willing to enter into a lease with them, and currently we do not have that, and I'm going to keep it real, and I'm going to keep telling you like it is, the truth, as opposed to leading you down some, some wayward path and making you think that all you have to do is wave, wave, wave a magic wand and up pops a grocery store. Tiffany Brooks, um, first and foremost, we all know that in order to bring about any type of capital being infused into your community or wherever you are, you have to form partnerships and relationships. You have to, and you have to be able to maintain the partnerships and relationships. And sometimes you have to sacrifice what you want or how you feel to maintain and achieve for the greater good. That's first and foremost. And I've been talking with a couple of funding sources who have developer, developers on staff that they are aware of, some who help bring in Whole Foods or bringing in Whole Foods to Inglewood. And those I, I choose to keep to myself, but I've already been interacting with these people. And I've already been setting the stage and the foundation and laying it so that we can bring a grocer back to South Shore on 71st, be it in the mall or elsewhere, so that we can bring the grocer in. Thank you. Uh, Robin, Bar uh, Robin Boyd Clark. I'm Robin Boyd Clark, and I also have been engaging in dialogue with various uh, grocers around the country. Eminent domain is not a community plan. Let me make that clear to y'all. It's not a community plan. And I was at that hearing 
for eminent domain. And on the screen, there was a big yellow square. That is not a plan, okay? So I would present a community plan to people. I have a background in engineering, construction, and development, and I know how to do that. I've run a community development corporation, as I've stated, and I also know how to work and bring people together. I have people ready to assume community uh, committee positions who know how to make it happen. I'm not talking about what I think I can do. This is what I have done. Okay? Thank you. Um, I want to echo that sentiment. Uh, eminent domain is not a community plan. I, I too, am involved in the grocery store proceedings uh, as a proud uh, a collaborative body with the planning coalition. And what was made clear to us is that this would not be eminent domain. This would be the opportunity to get in and to do some research. Um, which you can refer back to the record because the media covered it properly. But what I would do as uh, an alderman, is I got to be honest, I, don't, I, don't, I agree with the alderman, you can't wave a magic wand and, 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 and just create a grocery store. But what I would seek to do, first of all, is invest in the people who are still there, who still believe in business in South Shore. And we would advocate again for the TIF funds to possibly leverage a relationship with the current owner, owners so that we can get a deal so that people can shop again. As well as, as an alderman, utilize my relationships. If I'm the steward over the ward, then I should be able to have relationships so that we can either build a co-op for a grocery store or we can attract one, and that is the power of being an alderman, and that's exactly what I would do. Hi, I'm Ann Marie Miles. And mark my words, if Alderman Hairston is elected again, in four years we'll be sitting here and there will be no grocery store on 71st Street. She has just created the seeds for massive economic disinvestment on 71st Street. She's going to put 18 up and going stores out of business so that she can then think about a plan. She's been alderman for 15 and a half years and has no plans, no contingencies. Oh, I didn't know they were going to close. Oh, I didn't know they were going to take my TIF money for the high school. Oh, I didn't know they were going to do this. I think we've heard enough of I don't know for 15 and a half years. And let me tell you, I know and I will tell you. And I went to that development commission and I stood there and said the same thing. Thank you. I ask all of the uh, candidates to please respect the, uh, the timing and the, and the timer. So we're now we're going to uh, have closing statements, and you each have two minutes to speak. We're going to begin with number one, Robin Boyd-Clark. Greetings again. My name is Robin Boyd-Clark, and I just want to state that, yes, I've had some businesses, some franchises, a construction company that built Lakeshore Point, the 62-unit townhouse development in partnership with Shore Bank. I'm a co-founder of the South Shore Chamber, I am a co-creator of 100 permanent, uh, excuse me, jobs in Cook County and 70 permanent jobs in Cook County, most of them high-paying construction jobs. I'm centered on community wellness. I'm also the only candidate that is focused on historic preservation, which we now know is going to be an issue. I was beating my only drum alone, but we know now that we need to be concerned about the history, how it gets told, where these libraries go, and all the rest of that. I'm not, as I said earlier, I'm not on I can't breathe. I'm on I will breathe. I don't want to just stay alive in five. I don't want to just be all right in five. I want everyone across the ward in five to thrive. That's what I'm on. My platform is economic development, job creation, business retention and attraction, and historic preservation. And I would like to make sure that I ask for your support, I ask for your vote, and of course, again, your donation. Thank you. Um, I would like to just start off by saying that I'm running for alderman because 
I see only the potential and the possibility of what the ward should be, will be, and is going to be as I'm your alderman. It is a, Chicago is a global city, and this city gets a lot of its cues from the Fifth Ward. High Park gives a lot of cues to the city. And I would like to be the alderman that brings everybody back to the table. I want to be the alderman that makes the neighborhood feel safe again. The alderman who not is promising to get a relationship with the young people. I have one. And I want to get our young people off the streets thinking that the only economic opportunity that, that, that they can have is illegal. I want our community to feel empowered again, where you know your voice matters. Not just being heard, but being echoed by the individual that you select to be your public servant. I don't want to be your dictator. I want to be the man that rolls up his sleeves, that's out of the office, that's walking the ward, that's encouraging the police officers to walk the ward and know those that are living in the ward. I want us to, uh, to be the Chicago we used to be, where you will walk out your door and you will talk over the fence at your neighbor, and you will watch each other's children, and you will make sure that if you were a business owner, that every young person that walked past your shop had an opportunity. I want us to have sit-in restaurants in every part of the Fifth Ward, but more than anything, I want to make it really clear in response to that. I am not trying to be pessimistic, but I do want to be honest. There are some issues where I live, and I am unhappy that at 28 years old, I have had to spend most of my life fighting for a better Chicago, if you, if you, which, you, which has a proven track record. But I'm so committed to this, and I want to make it clear to every candidate up here, that even if the people of the Fifth Ward do not choose Jedediah, it's time for us to stop all this division and these differences to come to the table collectively, and that includes the aldermen who have served this war for 15 years. We got to work together. Hi, I'm Ann Marie Miles, and so let me tell you some of what I have done. I learned when I ran last time that many people have criminal backgrounds for really no reason, and it stops them from getting jobs. So I volunteer for Cabrini Green Legal Aid. I work at their help desk in the courtroom for free to help people seal and expunge their records. I help staff a help desk in Waukegan uh, run by the Office of the State Appellate Defender. And because of my community and citywide ties, I brought together Cabrini Green Legal Aid, the Office of the State Appellate Defender, the Union League Club, and we wrote a brochure for young people about collateral consequences. We have held hearings on collateral consequences, and we are now working to get a social justice metric so that we can evaluate prosecutors. Because prosecutors who are supposed to represent we the people far too often are more concerned about getting high felony conviction rates so they can get promotions in their office, they can look good when they apply to be, when they want to be evaluated by bar associations if they're running for judges. So I am working to change the entire criminal justice system of Cook County and Chicago. And we need an alderman who has an independent voice. We'll talk about the fact that while you know city council is voting on whether or not we can take our fruits and vegetables home in a plastic bag or what store we can buy our puppies from, that children are being shot as they play. Good afternoon again. My name is Tiffany Brooks. I am your neighbor and I am your partner. I am a member and resident of the community. And if elected alderman, I will work with you. Being an attorney is not an easy job. I handle and solve other people's problems every day when I wake up. It's my duty, it's my task as a public servant, it's what I love to do. Being an alderman is not an easy job. If it were, everyone would do it. You have to find a perfect balance in any elected official's seat. 
You do. You deal bu bureaucracy. You deal with the people. You have to make it work. You have to be able to understand both ends. I can do that. I will do that. I will be able to provide results, but I cannot do it alone. I cannot stress that enough. We have to work together in order to do this. We have to engage not only the city of Chicago, the council, the mayor, but also the police department and the schools. Everyone has to stand, the parents, the neighbors. We have to be that village that we keep referring to, that we keep saying that we have in South Shore. We have to unify and unite the ward as a whole, and then unite with the, t the contiguous wards, the wards that touch the four and the 20 and the seven and the eight. We have to be as one in order to find results, or we will continue to see the same results, and, and that's just a recipe for madness. I can say this, every day my clients entrust with me their personal information, their lives, their credit, their children, their freedom. And I do my absolute best to provide victory for them. As alderman, I promise to do my absolute best to provide victory and results for you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. <clears throat> I too am a lawyer. I think uh, my, uh, my opponent Tiffany and myself are the only two lawyers here that are licensed to practice uh, law in the state here of Illinois. So don't be fooled by people that play fast and loose with the truth. I am proud of my independent record. I am proud of standing up to Mayor Daley. I am proud of standing up to Mayor Ranuel, and Mary Ran Emanuel, wow. Um, I'm proud of my no vote for the parking meters. Any of you that had to go jingle for quarters, you'd be proud too. I am proud that I voted against the speed cameras. I don't need to have those speed zones giving me tickets everywhere I go. I am glad that I voted no for the infra infrastructure trust. I just wonder whether anybody up here other than telling you what they will do, whether or not they have done it. And see, we had a whole group of people in 2011 that came in and talked about how we needed change and how we needed to come and what they were going to do, and not one of them, I think there might have been one, that has stood up and been a progressive voice in the city of Chicago. I walk this ward every day. I walk with the police. I talk with the people. I have relationships. I have relationships with developers, educators, and even the homeless. I handle people's problems every day. I am the independence that you all have need. I am the independence that you all have had, and I continue to do it. You know, we talk about relationships. I don't know anybody that attended um, up here what to do when the lights go on, when your kids get pulled over by the police. How do we have that discussion? I've hosted, I've hosted forums on that. We work together. I want to work together. But you know what? In order to work together, you got to show up consistently and not just election time. I'm Leslie Harrison, and I'm asking for your continued support. Thank you so much. That's going to be it for the Fifth Ward Automatic Forum, brought to you by the NAACP Chicago Southside Branch, the SEIU Local Number 73, Cal, the Educational Village Keepers, uh, and Blacks and Green, better known as Big. Thank you so much for coming.